by the closing stages of World War II, Britain, Germany, Russia, Italy were all investigating jet-powered aircraft and had designs heading towards creating a jet aircraft of their own. It was Britain and the British Royal Navy who achieved the landmark first, though, of landing a jet aircraft onto an aircraft carrier deck whilst moving at sea. And this remarkably was done in December 1945, so only a few months after the end of hostilities of World War II, Fleet Air Arm and the British Royal Navy are actually setting the bar very high uh, and achieving a, this, this aviation first of landing onto an aircraft carrier with a jet aircraft. In this actual aircraft, this is LZ551G, little Mark I vampire, uh, built by the de Havilland Company, who through the war years were more famously known for their Mosquito fighter aircraft, the RAF aircraft, the Mosquito. And as many people will know, the Mosquito was made out of plywood, very light, very strong material that they knew very well how to form and make aircraft fuselages from. In a sense, we think composites are a modern concept. Well, plywood and gluing and fixing layers of plywood together is, is in itself a composite design. So de Havilland's were in a in a way ahead of the game that we think is a new technology these days. And the technology they understood by the end of 1945, of course, was just that plywood technology. So LZ551 is actually made mostly of plywood for the size of the jet, for the speeds that it would be traveling at, um, for the capabilities of this jet aircraft, still making the fuselage out of plywood was perfectly acceptable. It's now not got a propeller on the front. It's got a jet engine which can be installed behind the pilot. So all of the center of gravity, the weights, the thrust, the balance, the, the not needing to design an aircraft to have a propeller on its, on its front position, all of that has changed. So the pilot can now sit much, much further forward. This makes it an incredibly um, more straightforward design to use on an aircraft carrier deck, the pilot is sat closer to the front, there's nothing hindering his view, he can approach the aircraft straight and level now, or the aircraft carrier straight and level, rather than this long progressive turn that you'd have to do with the, the propeller driven aircraft. So many things about the jet aircraft as a design started to fit much more comfortably with aircraft carrier operations. Not only are we lucky enough to have an example of a Mark I Vampire in the collection, this is the actual aircraft that Captain Eric Winkle Brown flew on that day in December 1945 to perform that historic aviation first of a deck landing onto a ship moving at sea. So it's absolutely wonderful to be able to walk around and see how this aircraft was made, look at the technology that was absolutely the top end of its capability at the time. Everything about this aircraft was the next new generation, moving on from the piston engine age, aircraft with propellers, aircraft that were modified and becoming difficult to use and operate on ship's decks. This was a brand new type with everything about it that was going to say, this is the new technology moving forward. Eric Brown was a remarkable pilot, incredibly talented pilot, had flown right the way through uh, World War II with the fleet air arm and became uh, arguably the most famous test pilot of all times. Has flown more aircraft types than anybody else, more than 480 aircraft types, a record which is unlikely ever to be beaten. He had the opportunity to fly aircraft going into service with both the RAF and the Navy. He had opportunities to even recover aircraft immediately at the cessation of hostilities in World War II, bringing back German and Italian captured aircraft and bringing them back to Great Britain and test flying them for evaluation and gaining all of the interesting bits of technology that those countries were using, which we could then maybe adapt and use and copy onto our aircraft types. So Eric had an enormous spread of flying experience from early in the 1940s right the way through until well after the war when his service career finished. He was still involved with test flying with other, other um, civilian industries and companies long after his service with uh, the Fleet Air Arm. We have in the collection Eric's medal collection, his log books, his flying log books, which is an extensive volume of very, very interesting, very valuable 
archive and resource material, and his flying overalls, along with many other smaller objects connected with his flying career.